What's up everybody? I'm back with more of the Minnesota Twins franchise. It feels so good to be getting a lot of episodes out in this series lately and we're currently in the push toward the all-star game. We're only a couple weeks out in game and we should have a couple players there as the Twins turn their season around before the all-star break. We're six games above 500 right in the thick of things in the AL Central race and it's turning into more of a three-team race this season. We have an outstanding offense, many hot streaks, but then a lot of cold streaks weighing down us and the pitching staff. And currently, Miguel Sano is playing at a near MVP level, but it's going to be tough to edge out Mike Trout this season. We start the episode here with a road series in Boston, dropping the first game just like we did against the Rangers last episode. We put up plenty of runs and the bullpen lets us down late. Rysel Iglesias blows the save and allows four runs in the bottom of inning number nine. We then get a trade offer from the Miami Marlins, and it's a terrible one. They want starting pitcher Mike fulton for a player we used to have. Remember Zach Granite? He's solid, but not worth that deal. We end up beating Boston in the next game, 4-3, and we get much better pitching. We also get a home run from last year's derby champ, Nelson Cruz. And also get a good pitching outing from Mike fulton and the bullpen actually cleans up nicely. And we see Andres Valdez get his second victory. In the third game, Dallas Keuchel goes over seven innings, but he hurts his hand in the process. It's not a major injury, but likely one that's going to have him miss his turn in the rotation. We beat Boston 4-0. Much better here by the Twins on the road. David Price gives up three and six innings. And then in game four, we win that one as well, taking a road series against the Sox. That feels really good. And especially for our pitching to do well in those three wins. Five to one this time, and it's Maxwell Fowler. Nope, this one's Gary Tadano actually. Eight innings, one run allowed. The next day, it's Maxwell Fowler as we head over to Milwaukee, and the great pitching continues. They get one run in the ninth off of Glacius after Fowler goes eight and gets that ERA down to 3-6-3. That's where our episode is going to continue today. We're going to play against the Brewers. It's Yadier Alvarez on the mound. Down at AAA, meanwhile, it looks like Will Smith is getting things back on track with his season. I'm not sure when, though, I'd want to bring him back up to the majors. Maybe it's soon to give him a second chance before the trade deadline when we likely look for some more pitching talent to add. I did move around some players here in the farm system. Andy Eckert is one of them. He has deep potential, but a few intriguing ratings. And then Bravig Valera. I have really high hopes for him because of the high contact in Vision. My hope is that maybe toward the end of the year or next season, he has a chance to become the utility player I'm looking for because Taylor Motter isn't having a great season. He's hitting 197. You see his numbers here as we get into a game against the Brewers where we had just a lot of our core tired. We had to give a break to Josh Harrison. Nelson Cruz didn't play because we're playing interleague matchups now with no DH. And then Paul Goldschmidt also got the day off. He was our most fatigued player. This year, it's been Miguel Sano, not Paul Goldschmidt, as our best offensive producer. In the first inning, up the middle, Sano hits into the shift. Would have been good against the standard defense, but he grounds out. And batting third in this game, we move up Jorge Polanco, hitting 280 on the year, but doing a lot better at target field than on the road. A 2-2 count to Polanco. This is in the air out to center field, and it is caught for an easy 1-2-3 inning. Yadier Alvarez takes the mound today as one of the top strikeout pitchers this season in the American League. I think right now he's kind of being snubbed in the All-Star voting. He's had a really good year. And he tries to paint the corner, misses with a fastball, but connects on the outside. It's a slider to strike out Keon Broxton. Next up, it's power bat Eric Thames fouling off the fastball and falling behind. Alvarez gets him with the heat. When Alvarez gets the 0-2 count, it's like it's already over. And he's become our second best starting pitcher, I'd say, faster than I expected. On to winning number two, Junior Guerra misses up high against Mitch Garver. He walks. And then Byron Buxton, the average is up to 238. 2-1 two count left up and hammered to center field. It's down for extra bases. Garver rounds second. 
and Buxton's not stopping at two. Garver heads home. It's an RBI triple for Byron Buxton. When you have two of your best bats out of the lineup, you got to get production elsewhere, and Byron Buxton comes through. I do think his offense has been steadily producing, and the patience is paying off. I wanted to bring him home and get something in the air with Motter, but this didn't go far enough, obviously. Popped out here for the catcher. And with two away, Yunel Escobar gets a rare start and can't get this out of the infield. But the Twins do get their first run thanks to Buxton. Bottom two, it's Ryan Braun hitting 255 this season. This sky's in the infield. Easy play for Taylor Motter. With two down, it is Domingo Santana with a big hack at the fastball. And the 0-2. I told you those are over as soon as you get the 0-2 count. Alvarez strikes him out as well. Top three, Yasiel Puig still on that leadoff roll. And he will draw the leadoff walk just like Garver did in the second. Miguel Sano to follow. Big swing but can't connect on the fastball. Count even, Guerra's pitch is hammered into left field. Good job by Sano, turning on the inside pitch. And we send Puig over to third base, runners at the corners. Next, it's Jorge Polanco. He won't wait for a second pitch. It's into right field for a base hit. Two nothing Minnesota. The offense has been so much better recently. It's a lot more fun. Unfortunately, again, we can only get the one run as Garver strikes her. Flies out, rather. Great start, though. Really happy with it as we go bottom three. And Orlando Arcia, he will also be a strikeout victim. And then it's Guerra. And I guess we let our guard down here. Just threw a fastball somewhere around the middle. And he makes really good contact. That puts a man on for Jonathan Villar. Their switch hitting leadoff man who can't catch up to the fastball. Full count. Runner goes. And that's going a long way. Way out to right field, Puig watches this one fly into the upper deck. Two run homer, VR ties it. That's his 11th home run of the season. Not a good location on that pitch, tried to challenge him there and we don't get away with it. Should have done literally anything else. Two apiece as we continue inning number three and another strikeout for Alvarez. Broxton strikes out for the second time. On to the fourth, and Buxton's back up again. And on the 2-1, he's into center field, down for a single. It's a two-hit outing already. Taylor Modern next, a breaking ball hit into right. Good success here early against Guerra. And the pitch count getting elevated here with only nine outs recorded. But then he gets 10 and 11 here on the double play from Yunel Escobar. We go to Yadier Alvarez with Buxton at third base, and I didn't want to swing the bat unless they got two strikes here. And Guerra just could not get the zone. Big walk for us against us to Puig. They have a mound visit here. It's a chance to maybe get Guerra out of the game pretty early too. Yasiel Puig up, walked once already, gets a good pitch but is a little too late and jams it to second base. That was a big missed opportunity. That was the first pitch of the AB. I liked it, but just too late to do a whole lot with it. So let's go bottom four now. And we're going to start things with an 0-2 count. This one, though, is not over. It's grounded to second base, and Escobar can't handle it cleanly. It's an E4. Combine that with the hitting issues this year, hitting under, I think, 220. And I'm starting to wonder about Escobar's spot here on the active roster. They get a single to follow, two aboard, nobody down. And now the control. These aren't good enough pitches to challenge. And that one could have gone a long way. Full count again, grounded to second base. Clean play this time, Polanco to Sano playing first in this game. And we get the quick two. Trying to keep things tied, Alvarez. Got it. Over to Miguel Sano. Keep things tied at four. And the game would stay that way for a little while. We'll take it bottom five. Runner aboard for the Brewers. Alvarez gets the swinging strike. And the 2-2. Got him with the changeup. Another big strikeout for Alvarez. We head into the sixth. Garver up again. 2-2 count. He singles through the right side. Garver this season hitting a solid 283. Buxton next, the three hit day. 
Things really are getting better for Buxton at the plate. I love seeing that. And that would be it for Junior Guerra. Pretty solid day, but just couldn't get enough one, two, three innings. They turned the game over to Johnny Villalobos. And he throws some serious heat. The fastball's at 98. Not once, but twice in this at bat as Motter stares at strike three. With one down, it's Escobar. Gets underneath one out to left field. And that's not going to go far enough. Two straight outs. No one can advance. And with Alvarez up next, I decided to pull him out of the game for Paul Goldschmidt. I knew he could go one or two more innings, but with a runner in scoring position, I wanted Goldie out there to face a lower-rated relief pitcher. 2-2. Two, two. Lobo strikes him out, getting that one up to 99 on the radar gun. Big strikeout for the Brewers. We go bottom six, and Kevin Quackenbush comes in, and he picks up right where Alvarez left off. That was great to see. That was the knuckle curve. One, two, count to Braun. He'll strike out as well with the heater. So that inning definitely felt good. I knew I took Alvarez out a little early, justified it there a bit. And then in the seventh, that one is not going to be played cleanly, and Puig is able to reach. Villalobos facing Polanco, hammered to right, and right at the right fielder. Two away, back to Charlie Blackman now. Haven't seen him today, works this count full, and he's going to battle, looking for something he likes. A lot of pitches in this at bat. Finally, hit one in play, and it's a lazy fly to left. Braun gloves it, and still no one can get past this two-run mark. Bottom seven, an 0-2 count, hit into right, base hit Brewers. Next up, Orlando Arcia, a 3-0, and Quackenbush can't get the call. Two reach for the Brewers, and now they bring Boog Powell off the bench, trying to go down the line, and he fouls. Full count, Powell on the ground to the right side, another one, 4-6-3, double play. Still tied at two as we head into inning number eight. Here's Buxton. He's the player we've counted on today. Three hits in his first three trips. This time underneath it, skying into shallow center, deep second base, whatever you want to call it there. Then it's Yunel Escobar with two away. He'll hit one in the air. And unfortunately, it's a very lazy pop-out fly-out again. Bottom eight, we have to go into our bullpen one more time. Andres Valdez. He had a couple rough outings, but I have seen the potential at AAA, AA, and even when we got him up here a couple episodes ago. However, the control was not there from the very beginning. We do get a good swinging strike, and the payoff pitch. We tried that curveball of his, and it was in the dirt. Good take. So a leadoff walk. Followed by a liner to right. We can't cut it off. It's going all the way to the wall, and they have some serious speed aboard. It's Broxton over to third base. Vior scores, and the Brewers take the lead. They don't charge Puig with an error. It's an RBI triple for Keon Broxton. One more time. Normally in these situations, we're able to trap it at least, and Puig's a step behind it there. Next up. Eric Thames, base hit, 4-2, Brew Crew. The bullpen once again not able to keep it. But we do get Tony Watson in there and get another double play ball, our third of the game. But in the ninth inning, we had to go get at least two to extend things. We go to our bench one more time. Josh Harrison comes in. Can he deliver anything in this leadoff spot? Breaking ball, hit out well the left field, but it's catchable, and the play is made. Corey Knable, a very good closer. He's third in the National League this season, trying to get into second. He's got to face some of our best offensive players. Here's Yasiel Puig, 2-1, jammed to right, to the right side anyway, just like the grounder he had earlier. And Miguel Sano up the middle, just like his first ground out of the day. Hits right into the shift, and the Brewers secure the win. I know our bullpen let us down there at the end, but you can't count on winning games when you only score two runs. I felt good getting the production early off of Guerra, but then we got completely shut down by their bullpen, and that's the difference here. 
their bullpen does exactly what they had to do, especially when their starter didn't finish that much of the game. So, just one of those games that shows off a weakness of ours, but we also had a few starters not in there, so I expected less offense. We just couldn't sustain what we had early in the game. So next episode, we're going to start things against the Angels. I'm not sure which game yet I want to play. Probably going to be a couple more episodes before the actual All-Star game. Right now, the White Sox take back the top spot in the Central. It will update us on the rankings now. We're 11th in batting average. That's pretty good. And then we're 5th in runs. That's great. When it comes to home runs, we're way higher than I expected, actually. We have three main home run hitters. But it's all enough. We have the number six home run hitting team, the number 20 team in terms of pitching ERA. We're 25th in hits allowed. And then the dreaded home runs allowed, or this is just runs allowed. We are 21st in baseball. Dallas Keuchel still in good shape to make it to the All-Star game. Same with Paul Goldschmidt and Miguel Sano. Unfortunately, Tyler Duffy is plummeting. Now I'm doubting he will be able to make it unless he has an outstanding final week and a half. And that's about going to take us to the end of the episode here. It's been a fun stretch getting more episodes up on the channel. want to keep this going. Hopefully get Dallas Keuchel back pretty soon. He'll miss probably one start. And then Byron Buxton. We got to talk about how much better he's been this year hitting 245. This would not be a career high for him in average, but it would be close. My patience hopefully will continue to pay off with Buxton. If he can be a career 240, 250 hitter, it's going to be less than we had hoped at the beginning, but I think it's going to be acceptable when you combine it with the elite defense we get from him. So that's it for today, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please smash that like button. Can we get this episode up to 750 likes? Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you with more Twins franchise soon. Have a great rest of your day.